Hello and welcome back to another Rush Duel Links deck profile. Today we're taking a look at aggro and aggro is a bit of a nebulous concept. Basically aggro means dragius and then good stuff pile but there are lots of different flavors of aggro and rather than try and make a different video for each different one what I thought we'd do is take a look at some of the more popular aggro builds at the moment and kind of talk about them and really having like five or six different videos all about just Dragius beatdown seems a little bit redundant. So Dragius is obviously always going to be the key focal point of this deck and that is because whenever we're not playing around a specific skill Dragius is just the best card in the game. 2500 attack is a fantastic stat for a two tribute monster as well as the fact that this monster can attack twice which is extremely powerful. This is good for clearing your opponent's entire board if we're able to weaken our opponents or boost up our Dragius' attack, it can clear over two of our opponent's boss monsters. And if our opponent has three monsters on the field, we can attack through their monsters and then get a direct attack in with Dragius for 2500, which is really good. It's one of the best ways and the most consistent ways to get to our opponent's life points, which just makes Dragius probably the best kind of standalone monster in the game, which is why the Limit 3 list is the please don't play this with Dragius list. So we'll go ahead and talk about the skill. So... For the most part, aggro lists are playing Hammer Crush Deal. So why are they playing the skill? This is because this is probably the best skill that doesn't have any restrictions on it whatsoever. So what does it do? It can be activated once per duel, set one Hammer Crush from your hand in your spell and trap card zone and draw one card. So basically, if we have Hammer Crush in our hand, we set it on the field, we draw one card and that's it. It's not really doing anything too impressive. It just gives us a plus one. But we have to have a hammer crush so either we're going to spend that on the hammer crush or we're just going to leave the hammer crush set on the field and just get one deeper into our deck effectively playing like a 29 card deck it's fine there's nothing bad about the skill there's nothing particularly good about the skill it's just a fine generic skill another skill that some people have been playing in their aggro builds is life point gain and this is quite simply activate your life points at least 2000 lower than your opponents once per duel gain a thousand life points and again this is just another fine generic skill all of these generic skills are going to be very low impact but they do do exactly what you need them to do which is just something useful without any restrictions on them finally the last skill that we find to see in these aggro builds tends to be legend draw so it can be activated before your normal draw and turn four onwards if your opponent is a face up level seven or higher monster and you have no monsters on your field once per duel one of the cards from your normal draw will be a legend monster and we can use this to search primarily it's going to be barrel dragon but it could be something like a summon skull or it could be a level four monster like archfiend soldier so this build of the deck is kind of pure aggro this was used by a Japanese player called Bumpy that managed to get 7th place in the global rankings during the GRF. And one of the key notable things about this is, it's not really playing that many boss monsters. We're playing the 3 Dragius and we're playing the 1 Barrel Dragon and then nothing else. So generally, aggro builds usually have something aggro, right? So Dragon aggro plays Ancient Arise Dragon, Thunder aggro plays Trigger Drago, Aqua aggro plays Dean Keto. All of these different other boss monsters are kind of what decides what flavor of aggro it is. But because this deck is basically just playing Dragius and then has Barrel Dragon kind of splashed in, this is just kind of pure aggro. This is just, we just have Dragius and here he is. It's a bit of a weird deck. We found success with this deck. Whenever we found our boss monsters, we would generally win the games that we played with this deck. But... At the same time, because we only had four, there were a lot of games we just didn't find any and we just slowly lost the game and it felt very lackluster. So all in all, I'm not too impressed with this deck despite this making seventh place during the GRF. But we'll just go through and talk about some of the cards. Rising Light Angel Essel, again, absolutely fantastic. And arguably this is the strongest way to use it because bringing back a Dragius or a Barrel Dragon is probably the highest value you can get from this card but during the turn you have not special summoned a monster send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard then if you have activated this effect during the first turn of the play going second you can special summon one monster from either player's graveyard face up the field so again cheating out a dragius or a barrel dragon is absolutely incredible and if you do manage to pull it off you're in a very very good position but otherwise milling cards are still really good because again all of these decks always want to mill cards for this deck specifically it's going to be talismanic seal array that you want cards in the graveyard for but also being able to plus and just tribute off bodies is really good. That doesn't come up as much in here because again, we only have the four bosses. So getting that plus one doesn't tend to help out as much, but still very, very strong. 
Next up, we have Light Sorcerer Sanctity. Again, this is a bit pay to win card because this is a structure deck card, but still very, very strong. Pay 300 life points. One face up monster on your opponent's field loses attack equal to the number of face up light attribute spellcast type monsters on your field times 300 until the end of the turn. So if we only have one of this card, reduce it by 300. If we have up to three, we can reduce it by up to 900. And if we do manage to get out all three copies of our Light Sorcerer Sanctity, we can reduce a monster's attack by 2700, which is very very strong that's also the reason we're specifically playing light sorcerer because it is a 1500 beta but also it is a light spellcaster so it does work with sanctity next up we have seven's robe mage another pretty decent effect we can send top to the graveyard and then make one of our opponents level seven highs lose 400 attack now weakening your opponent's monsters is usually better because Weakening your opponent's monster means that it's not attached to your monster, so if your monster gets popped, you don't lose that boost, as well as it's like giving all of your monsters a boost, because they all gain that effect if they attack into that monster, so if they have back row to protect it, you still get another shot at it. In this deck, typically, I think Speedy Performer would generally play a little bit better, just because we do have the Dragius. And Dragius plus a boost means we're basically doubling that boost, so Speedy Performer on a Dragius effectively is like boosting it by 800. We get 800 extra damage because Dragius will be attacking twice, but this build does opt for Seven's Red Mage, which is still pretty good, and Weakening Monsters is generally always pretty good. One other thing you'll generally see in aggro builds is a lot of 1500 beaters. Here we have Dark Sorcerer, Gazelle, and Faith Bird, and we've opted for these ones because 1500 attackers are just generally quite strong, and they're quite good in the aggro game. They can attack over a lot of the 1400 defense monsters, which have become quite prevalent, such as Grace Princess Kana or Babysitter Goat, which are both seeing play. Kana because it's part of the Aqua engine, and Goat because it's part of the Majesty engine. So 1500 is still very good. We have a little bit of back row hate with the Magical Stream, and then obviously the two Hammer Crush for the skill. Shield and Sword also is almost always the legend choice for the spell slot for aggro builds. That's because this card lets you flip attack and defense, which means a lot of the meta threats at the moment have zero defense. So being able to just attack over them is really, really strong. As well as generally, a lot of monsters have lower defense than attacks. So it just lets you get in either way. But Shield and Sword can just win games. And at the very least, it does generally help you break boards. Then we have Talismanic Sealery, which again, fantastic for multiple reasons. We can use this to shuffle back our boss monsters into our deck and just keep reusing them. Being able to recycle Dragius is really, really strong. Weakening your opponent's monsters is a good way to get their life points. And again, this is aggro so we just want to get as much damage in as quickly as possible so it just really helps with that as well as this is the only real consistent way the deck has to deal with maximum monsters so tsa is really really strong in this deck very very valuable and then finally widespread ruin best trap in the game it's just amazing there's no reason not to play it right now notably there is something missing here and that is the king's majesty some decks have been opting to play one king's majesty and three goat just as a good out to a lot of the current meta threats, such as the Royal Rebels and the Helltuning Invasion, or the Magnum Overlord. And King's Majesty is good enough that you can just kind of play in any deck, and it is generally pretty good. But in general, the aggro builds have opted against it, and instead of just going for more balls to the walls, more aggression, we want more 1500 beaters, and that does kind of make sense. Again, the deck is Unga Bunga Go Face, and what better way to Unga Bunga Go Face than just slamming a load of 1500 vanillas? But yeah, this is the pure aggro deck. Now we'll go and take a look at some of the other variants and kind of talk about some of the differences between them. So this is Dragon Aggro. This is one of the most popular lists, or at least it was, back before the kind of hell tuning invasion meta kind of arose. And the reason being, Ancient Arise Dragon was just one of the best high level monsters in the game because it could attack around the barrier. But with the release of the new meta, the barrier kind of fell out of favor because in a lot of the matchups it didn't really accomplish much. Therefore, Ancient Arise Dragon has also kind of fallen from grace a little bit as well. Obviously, we still have the Dragius, and a lot of the cards in here you'll see are quite samey. You can see we are on the Speedy Performer in this list. Again, that does work really well with the Dragius. We also have Archfiend Soldier as our legend, because this build aims to have less high-level monsters, and therefore, we just go for something a bit lower level. This could also just as easily be Valkyria, just to be an extra light spellcaster to go with our Light Sorcerer of Sanctity engine, but Archfiend Soldier has an okay defense value as well as a very good attack value. Then just the typical 1500 beaters. We also have the shield and sword. And again, the spell trap lineup is very, very similar because again, these decks are all going to be very, very similar. But this deck specifically is very good at attacking over back row. And that is just because Ancient Arise Dragon is really good to protect your Dragius against something like Widespread Ruin, as well as the fact that getting up to 3000 attack does attack over a lot of things such as Counter Pigeons and the Barrier. So if those cards become very, very prevalent, this deck becomes a lot stronger. Next up, we have Thunder Aggro. Now, this is arguably, I think, the strongest version of this deck, and that's just because of the inclusion of Trigger Drago. With the barrier falling out of fashion, 
In a lot of ways, Trigger Drago is just a better version of Ancient Arise Dragon. It has 2500 base instead of 2400, and it doesn't quite reach that 3000 attack, but it does get up to 28, which is still very good, and occasionally does gain piercing as long as your opponent doesn't have any cards in their hand, which means it's a really good way to get to your opponent's life points, as well as the fact that we can also run Sensor Duckbill, which means we have a way to recur it back from the graveyard. So we can draw out Duckbill, either just tribute it off if we don't need to use it, or use its effect to get back a Trigger Drago back to our hand, then have another boss monster to use that can be really, really strong. Also, you'll note that this deck is playing two different engines. In the Aqua engine, using the Seahorse Carrier and the Canan, as well as Paku Paku Chu and the Beast engine, with Gazelle, the All-Seeing White Tiger, and Silver Wolf. Basically, use both these engines just to keep plussing, to be able to sacrifice off the extra bodies to get out your big boss monsters, which is why this deck is all the way up on six boss monsters, even though some of the others are on even less. And again, we have pretty much the same spell trap lineup. And again, these decks are all taken from the GRF Festival. These are all lists that have proven themselves and have performed quite well during the GRF. This isn't just like my own personal bias. This deck has been seeing a ton of play and a lot of people were on a list either exactly like this or similar to this. Next up, we have Zombie Aggro. Now, this is a bit more of a modern inclusion because this is from the latest Super Mini Box. This build is more, I want to say, of a fun build than an overall powerful build but it does use Dark Doom Dread Ruler to some effect. 2,500 attack obviously is still pretty good. We have to discard a zombie to use its effect, but it does gain 1,000, which means, again, it does protect Dragius from being destroyed by something like a widespread ruin, as well as the fact that we can burn our opponent for 700 occasionally, which does come up. It also lets us quite nicely use the zombie engine. The zombie engine is usually frowned upon a little bit just because the only monsters we're allowed to bring back are zero attack zombie monsters, and zero attack monsters generally aren't very good in an aggro build because we want to be summoning out lots of 1500 beaters and we want to keep going face. As you can see, the main difference between this and some of the other lists is to fit all these different engines in, we are playing a lot fewer beaters. You can see that we have kind of 1400 as our best kind of level four, and then we have 1200 as our next. So it's a lot lower power level in exchange for some consistency. And you can also see that we're playing less spell traps in this build as well. But this deck is still fine. It can still definitely win games. It's still the aggro deck. It's just maybe a little bit weaker than some of its counterparts. And then finally, we have Dino Aggro. Now, to be honest, Dino Aggro is not very strong. But I personally really like this deck. I did come second place in a very small tournament with this deck. And I just... Any chance I have to talk about dinosaurs, I'm going to talk about dinosaurs. You might know that about me already, but I'm kind of a dinosaur guy and I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about Super King Rex. This is the only really good way to play dinosaurs and even then it's not even that great because Super King Rex does not fix any of the outstanding problems that Dragius kind of has. Super King Rex doesn't give us any piercing, it doesn't give itself a power boost so we can't protect Dragius using widespread ruin, it doesn't give us a good way to attack over other 2500 attack monsters. Overall, it's kind of a bit mid, but being able to cheat back a 1500 attack monster is still okay. It's kind of like a Stormbolt Destroyer, except it's got a 2500 body, but we can only use the effect the turn it's normal summoned instead of every turn. So it's a little bit awkward, but I genuinely love this card. And then we're playing the Beast Engine in here just to, again, be used as having some aggro bodies because we've already got the 1500 in Urubi, so why not include the 1500 in Gazelle? Then why not try and recur some of those monsters with Paku Paku Chu? And again, spell trap lineup exactly the same. One noticeable difference is that we are playing life point gain and we have swapped out the hammer crush deal for go cyclone but you could use this any other way. We've decided for this because again this was what was used in the GRF. They, the only player that we saw using dinosaurs that made the top 100 was using life point gain. So yeah that's it. Those are all of the kind of the big aggro lists. Now there is still aqua aggro but again we didn't really want to play all of the different aggro variants, and I guess you could argue there are a few others. Some of the decks are playing something like Prima Gatana to be this extra boost because again increasing Dragius's attack effectively gets doubled because it can attack twice so Prima Gatana is also another card that's seen a lot of play but these are kind of it for aggro again the aggro deck is always just going to smash smash go face pop attack 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 just get in for as much aggro as we can hence the name and it's always going to be Dragius and friends but enough talking about the deck why don't I show you what it can do in some of these replays
Let's do it! 